day to die. Clear. Yeah, directing was, uh, it was an amazing, really amazing experience. Um, it was scary at first, I mean, I, I was, I was very honored to have been asked to direct, uh, but at the same time, I've been an actor for so long, almost 20 years, and, and I'm comfortable in that environment, being an actor. Uh, to, to be, to be on, the, on, the, on the set, but to be working in an entirely different capacity, and one with, with a very different set of responsibilities was, was really kind of nerve-wracking, but uh, once I got into it, I, I really, really, really enjoyed it. Um, there's something about being engaged in, in that level of, of uh, when you're directing, you're, you're, you're involved in absolutely every aspect of the show. Whereas when you're acting, you're only involved in a very specific aspect. So <clears throat> it was really, it was really invigorating to be able to to, uh, to go through that process and, and work with the crew and, and my fellow actors in a different way. Um, and I, I was very lucky that I. I such a great sanctuary has such a wonderful crew and a wonderful cast and, and I was very lucky to have cast guest stars who, who also were, were wonderful actors and really brought a lot to the, the episode and also the episode the, the, the script that, that that James Thorpe and, and Damon Kinder wrote for me was, was a really really special one so overall <clears throat> it was a really magical experience and certainly I would, I would love to do it again. God, there's been so many. I, I, I can't even think. I, I, if, if I have to think of one from this season, uh, it's, it was the last day of my directing. Uh, Amanda <coughs> wanted to do something nice for me and, and get me a, a, a gift, sort of a, a, a congratulations on my sort of directing, wrapping, wrapping my directing episode gift. So she hired a, a singing telegram for me, uh, and the man's name was Leonard the Leprechaun, <laughs> and she figured, you know, with me being, have, you know, having an Irish connection, and, and that, that would be, be a funny thing, <laughs> and I, I suppose it would have been, but <clears throat> when, uh, when Leonard the, the, the lucky Leprechaun showed up on set, uh, he, he was, was uh, looked nothing like a Leprechaun, uh, he, was, he was about seven feet tall. And uh, he had a little top hat on, and, and, and he was he, he was singing James Brown's uh, "I Feel Good," which I don't know where where the Irish connection there. I don't know. If, I don't, I don't remember <laughs> James Brown being Irish, uh, but uh, <coughs> it was uh, it was it was quite it was quite an awkward moment. That the song went on for quite a long time. I mean, God bless the guy. He 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 was he was doing his best, and uh, and. and but I, I think it just was a, a strange time because we were all sitting around, not sure what was what we should have done. And and, and uh, I got to my, I did my sort of classic thing when when I don't know what else to do. I just took my pants off. So then I took my pants off, and then he he started, you know. That's what I walk into. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Anytime I say uh, I, I I I'm gonna take my pants off, Paul McGillian walks into the room. <laughs> <laughs> but that just made uh, you know so, so then me, me standing there in my boxers with my pants around my ankles it made it even more awkward because okay. the guy was just, just didn't know what to do and he wasn't sure he did he didn't know that obviously Leonard didn't know the joke of me taking my pants off so he just he just thought I was taking my pants off for some other reason but, uh, it really got quite uh, awkward um, so yeah I guess that, I guess that's probably in recent memory that's probably the most awkward moment. Please don't touch me. Please don't touch me. <laughs> I spent so much time on my hair. <laughs> now it's, it's ruined. You've ruined it. Uh, I, I did about three or four-ish songs in, 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 the, uh, in, in the music club, so no. I mean, I did... I did I guess I did three, 
one of one of them is sort of a half a song, sort of just a little bit, little piece of a song. But um, but yeah, singing those that, that musical episode was was really really fun to do, and uh, I, I I'm glad it's 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 it, it's not like Glee. I, I think not not to take anything away from Glee. It's it's a very popular show. And, uh, it's not Sanctuary. <laughs> but yeah, uh, Sanctuary is a much different show as as you know you, you can imagine, um, and I think the the really really wonderful thing about this episode one of the many great things is that it really organically ties the story into the music I think a lot of times when you see uh, episodes to television episodes that, that do musical musicals there's sort of a gear shift there's the story the story and then we sort of shift into into the song and then go back to the story uh, Damien wrote this episode in, in a very it's a very well written episode in, in, in that it, it, the music really works with the story and it really it really is, is connected to the story in, in a very very natural way so I think I think when people watch the episode few they're going to um, it's, they're going to just find themselves watching a, a musical number without sort of realizing it at first because it's going to sort of really gradually come in I love doing the dancing episode, uh, but I'm I'm glad that we 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 do the musical episode and it, it's it's a true musical episode. It's 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 um, it's much different, and I, I think that's what sort of I've said this for a long time. But one of the many great things about working on the show on Sanctuary is that we get to do these different things, and, and this this overwhelming commitment by the creators of the show to, to tell stories in a different way, in a new way, and uh, that just makes it really exciting for everybody who works on it, and, and I think Fugue is certainly an, an, an example of that. Um, Andrew Lockington is our composer, and he writes all the music for the show, and uh, yes, he did write the music. I know Damien and, and he worked together um, on the lyrics and the music for the episode, but it was really... It was really a, a great thing to have Andrew there. Andrew came in, uh, came, came to Vancouver for the recording of, of the, the music when we were in the recording studio before we started shooting, and it was it was really comforting to have him there. He's a he's a he's a, he's a music guy. He he knows how to work with people who are not very experienced uh, at singing like like me. <laughs> Being in the studio and being in the recording studio, it's kind of a, it's an intimidating thing. So it was great to have Andrew there, kind of guiding us through, and um, yeah, it was, it just made the experience that much. It was still, it was still a very challenging experience, but uh, but without, without Andrew there, it would have been, would have been impossible for us. Yes, definitely, we're going to learn a lot about. Will's past in, in, in season four in Homecoming, the episode that I directed, uh, which is episode 406, sixth episode of the season. Uh, we, we, we go right into Will's past. We're going to meet Will's father. Um, we're going to we're going to see flashbacks um, to the history that Will has with his father and, and what his home life was like from right to the time when he was a little, a little boy to uh, to present day so certainly we, we do we do we're gonna get a glimpse into more than a glimpse into Will's past in, in this season and it, it's again that was another very special aspect of the show of, of that episode particularly working with with Alsa Pienza who, who plays um, my father uh, and, and just being able to to play the character, play the character of Will in, in, in different stages of his life uh, was, was really a lot of fun and I think the, the, the fans are going to really, really get a kick out of the fact that they're going to learn some stuff about Will in his past and, and see him, see him as a younger man and, and see me wearing a, a, a very, very good mullet wig again. <laughs> I was uh, a, a sci-fi guy. I don't know that I was a traditional sci-fi guy. I, 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 my, I'm very, I'm very specific in my, my sci-fi tastes. I am a huge Star Wars fan. 
and um, the original three, the, the yeah. whatever three, four, five, and six. Uh, we won't talk about the the new ones. <laughs> I don't want to get upset, uh, <coughs> but yeah, I I, uh, I really was influenced by those movies as a kid, and, and I think they're 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 a big reason why I got into the film business and, and why I, I really kind of gravitated towards the genre of sci-fi. And certainly, yes, I'd, I'd love to, to go to Comic-Con as a, as a fan. I, I actually, tr every, every year that we go there, we, we've been there now four years in a row, and, and every year that, that we go there, I, I sneak down to the, the convention floor and um, go to the, the, the Lucas, you know, the Star Wars thing and check out the toys. and. The, the, the problem is, is that I end up buying lots of toys and bringing them home and putting them around my house, and, and then you know people come over and they they think I'm you know just a, a, a man child because I have toys all over my house, and <laughs> I guess they wouldn't be entirely wrong. Um, but uh, yeah, you know what's wrong with playing with toys? You know, you're, I'm 35 years old. I can play with toys. It's fine. You know, they're, they're Star Wars toys. It's it's cool, right? I mean, it's not nothing <laughs> weird about that. We hereby appoint you as acting head of the Global Sanctuary Network. I, I think certainly Magnus chose Will for a reason. I think you know there's a great respect between the two characters, and, and there's a great bond between them. Um, they really rely on each other. Um, they depend on each other, actually. I think, and. So yes, I, I think when Will makes decisions and when Will is headstrong and, and stick to it, sticks to his guns, and when he when he he tells her things that upset her, she, I think at the end of the day she knows that he's got her back and he's on her side and he he's he's really you know really committed to the sanctuary and. and is only he doesn't act out of ego, but acts out of a belief in what what Magnus has built in the sanctuary. I think it's vice versa too. Um, you know, Will expects nothing less from Magnus. So yes, I think even though it causes tension between the two characters uh, often, it's it's something that they need to do. They you need to have someone in your life who will tell you the the truth, even maybe even when you don't want to hear it. And those are the those are the most valuable friends you can have, and I certainly think that's that's the situation between Magnus and Will. In season four, I mean, we've seen we've seen tension between them in the past, uh, but nothing like what you're going to see in season four. There's really um, Will's a guy who's really committed to to the sanctuary, and once he once he dives in, he does it 100 percent. But I think you're going to see. Magnus is forced to be very secretive this season. She's got a she's got a plan. It's a very complex plan, and she she's got to carry it out. And she can't she can't really let anyone know. And that's uh, very hurtful to Will. And I think you're going to see the, the the cracks in the foundation of that friendship form a little bit. And you're also going to see Will start to doubt for the first time whether he made the right decision. So yeah, it's it's more than ever. I think you're you're gonna see some some uh, some very difficult moments between Magnus and Will. Well, I, I will say one thing about the the two Wills. It's just like, I guess one Will is just not enough. They need to. They just need to. And I don't blame them. You know, uh, the more the merrier. I think. Uh, but yeah, no, that's coming up to. Um, <coughs> Uh, Martin Wood uh, this season uh, wrote an episode uh, that's coming up as uh, episode seven, Icebreaker, in which uh, <coughs> there are some there are some identity crises going on, and uh, and it's a, it was a very cool episode to shoot. Uh, it was actually not cool because we were boiling. Uh, we, it's, it's a it's a winter episode. We're, we're trapped on a on a ship in the uh, in, trapped in the ice. And uh, we were so of course we have to wear parkas and hats and, and gloves and everything. And, and of course it was the middle of the summer and we were we were boiling <laughs> to death. But um, 
but yeah, it was it was a very interesting episode to shoot in, in, in that you know, technologically the way we, we, were, we were shooting some stuff with with the doubles of of uh, Will and some other characters. Uh, so yeah, it's it's it was uh, it was very interesting. <laughs> Um, I don't know if uh, I would use the word goofball. <laughs> I think I would. Uh, I would go with more of the the term comedic genius. <laughs> uh, but uh, yeah, I I uh, I love to goof around and, and 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 as we all do. I mean, we are we're we're constantly having a great time and, and laughing. And, and I think that's that's what makes. It's special, a special job for us. You know, not only is it a show that, that, that we like and we like to work on, and, and an interesting show to shoot, and and, and the stories are, are, are really exciting to, to act, and uh, the, the technology in which we, 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 we make the show is, is is really fresh and new. But also, we have a great time doing it. You know, we have we, we're, we're every day on set, we're laughing and. and we all really get along with each other, and it's because of that that I, I think uh, it make, makes it, it makes it special. And I believe I don't know that the audience necessarily consciously can see that when they watch the show, but I believe that when something there's some even if you kind of subconsciously get it that when you watch the show you can just tell that we, we all really really like each other and we all really really love what we do and I think that comes across um, in the show yes uh, Amanda and I are, are just about to go off to do a movie together um, I can't talk much about it um, uh, it goes into production this November, this coming November in 2011, so um, it's a it's a comedy, and yeah, it's 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 a wacky comedy that uh, I'm I'm, uh, I'm producing uh, with with a company called Foundation Features, and uh, I I kind of roped Amanda into coming along with me and, and doing it. We just decided that we're just gonna we're just gonna work together solely from now on. That's all we're gonna do. Um, but it's it's really great. It'll be it'll be exciting to to a work on a on a, on a comedy, uh, a flat out comedy, and b it'll be it'll be really great to be able to work with Amanda, uh, but in a completely different different way with you know not as Will and Magnus but but as, as two other characters. And so I'm I'm really looking forward to it. I'm gonna I'm gonna take a little break uh, after we we leave France, um, take a little break and then go right into production on, on that movie. So we'll uh, look for that next year. To finish. Um, it's almost over? What? <laughs> yes. God, just getting started. <laughs> um, do you love friends? Have you have time to visit some stuff? I love friends. I, I, first of all, I gotta say, um, this, 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 this France Sanctuary, the Sanctuary France team here, uh, really amazing. Um, the, the, the stuff that they've got out there, uh, the table is, uh, is is really exciting, and, uh, and it's really nice to come to, to visit another country, but really kind of feel at home with the sanctuary, and, and that's kind of what we do on the show, right? There's sanctuaries all over the world, and uh, and so that's so coming here and, and, and me working with you guys and seeing what you've done with the, with the sanctuary, Francis, is uh, is really nice. It's kind of like you know, it's imitating art, imitating life, kind of thing, uh, and. Yeah, I mean, how could you how could you not love France? What, what's not to love? There's, there's, there's uh, the food is is amazing. The, 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 all the cities in here in Marseille is a beautiful, beautiful city. Um, the women are beautiful. You know, I mean, what well, I, I, I if I didn't have to leave, I probably would you know, just stay here. And, you know, but uh, maybe I will. Maybe I'll just stay. Just, be, just you know, maybe I'll stay and work at the the, the, the <laughs> France sanctuary. Why not? Yeah, why not? <laughs> You're welcome, you know? Yes, thank you very much. Awesome. Okay, thank you, Robin. Thank if you, you much. want to add something, you just can. Uh, well, I'm just going to say, just be abnormal. Because abnormal is the new normal. <laughs>